Hello everyone and welcome to another video on the car series. This video will cover all the road markings, the colours, the lines and all the grids. For simplicity, I'm going to split this video roughly into six sections. The first section is going to cover the road markings right at the edge of the road. The second part is going to cover the signs and the road markings that control traffic. The third part is going to cover the markings that you see right in front of you. The fourth section is going to cover the lines that split the road. The fifth is going to cover the bus and cycle lanes. And finally, the sixth is going to cover the motorway markings that you would typically see. With that said, let's begin. So let's jump in. When you're driving and observe the road, you will notice various lines of different colours and shapes right at the edge of the road. Let's firstly have a look at the markings in red. Double red lines like this means no stopping or waiting at any time. They literally operate 24 seven. If you park there, you will catch a hot ticket. However, on a single red line, you're allowed to stop during certain times of the day. There's usually a sign right next to this line that shows you when you can and can't wait. If you're unsure how to read these signs, don't worry, I got you. Just check out my video on parking, I'll link it down below. Double yellow lines like this mean no waiting, but you can pick up and drop off as long as it doesn't contradict any signage in the area and as long as it doesn't have two yellow marks on the pavement. These two marks mean no loading and unloading at any point in time. Again, unless it contradicts any signage in the area, double yellow lines are usually allowed to be parked on by blue badge holders for up to three hours. A single yellow line means no waiting or parking during the time shown on a signage or parking signage nearby. Outside of the parking restriction time, you can park it as long as you like. Zigzag lines often come in two colours. They come in white and they come in yellow. The white zigzag lines typically appear before a crossing. This is letting you know that you can't park here and you can't overtake. It is really dangerous to do so. A yellow zigzag often appears outside of schools. It means you can't stop and you can't wait unless there's a sign that indicates it's hours of operation. Then you can park outside of these. Parking bays look like this. Be sure to read the signage properly and park within the lines. Country roads, dual carriageways and motorways often have a single unbroken white line at the edge of the road. It demarcates the road. Sometimes it also indicates that there is no pavement. You're going to see this marking on high speed roads and because of this they're ridged this causes a vibration so when you venture too close to the edge your car starts to feel a bit funny it goes about saying that you cannot park on this line and lastly in this section we have access protection markings also known as h-bars these don't actually have any legal standing they are advisory and they're usually painted outside of people's dropped curbs however i will say that some people will give you hell for parking outside of their homes, especially if they have a dropped curb. So it's probably best not to, unless clearly you're stubborn too. <laughs> now we're onto the section of road markings that control the flow of traffic. Yellow box junctions are often seen at crossroads. You can enter this box as long as your exit is clear. You can't wait in this box. The only time you can wait is when you're making a right turn. And the only thing that is stopping you from a full and clear exit is the cars that are oncoming. I'll give you an example. Let's assume you are where this blue dot is and you are wanting to make a right turn. You can wait in that box if the only thing that is stopping you are the cars coming from this direction. Once those cars have passed, you should be able to exit and continue on your journey. If you're, however, going straight ahead, you must not wait in this box. You will catch a ticket. You've got to make sure that your exit is completely clear. Another sign that can catch you a ticket is this keep clear sign. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's usually outside of hospitals and fire stations and it literally means keep clear and don't wait in that section. Here are some other markings that control traffic. When you see an arrow like this, it means you need to turn into the direction it's pointing into. Some extra signage might be available to reinforce this rule. Here is another example of this. This lane tells you where it's headed and where you must turn if you choose to stay in this lane. Written information like this is often self-explanatory. This one is telling you to slow down and typically you have this sign when there's a hazard ahead. Numbers like this are telling you the speed limit. Now we have reached a section of markings that are directly in front of you. When you see markings that look like this, it means it's a roundabout, so you must give way to traffic and cars that are coming from your right-hand side. 
when you see a continuous white line in front of you and the word stop written on the ground, it means you must come to a full and complete stop before you make a left or right turn. You will also see this straight white line on main roads, but it won't have the word stop on it and it will not have the stop sign. The thing it will have is a traffic light, so you must stop when the traffic light tells you to do so. You're most likely going to be seeing this road marking every single day. This is the give way sign. It means you must give way to traffic that are coming from the main roads. This includes pedestrians. One thing to know is that road markings are not isolated pieces of information. There's usually road signs that go with them. If you don't see one in the case of a give way sign, you will most likely see an upside down triangle to reinforce the fact that it is a give way line. Now we're on to the section where we look at lines and markings that separate the road. These are centre lines, they're white lines with regular breaks in between. These separate opposing flows of traffic. Markings that have longer lines with shorter breaks are called hazard lines. They're used to tell you when a hazard is nearby. A hazard can be things like a crossing or a roundabout. Lane lines or lane dividers are short broken lines that have slightly larger spacing. You usually find these on larger roads and they're used to divide the driving space. Double white lines come in various forms. When you see markings that look like this, it's important to note whether the line closest to you is broken or solid. If the line is solid, the official rule in the highway code is rule 129, which states that you may cross this line if necessary, providing the road is clear, if you need to pass a stationary vehicle or overtake a pedal cycle, a horse or road maintenance vehicle, if they're traveling under 10 miles per hour. However, if the line closest to you is broken, it's governed by a different rule. It's governed by rule 128 of the highway code. This states that you may cross the line to overtake if you can complete the manoeuvre before reaching a solid white line on your side. And of course, a double white line means you can cross if necessary, providing the road is clear, only if you need to overtake someone cycling, someone riding a horse, a maintenance vehicle, and if they are travelling under 10 miles an hour. These are the official rules, but the reason why there's a lot of confusion over these lines and the reason why people believe that you shouldn't cross them is because they're typically placed on high speed roads or country roads. And here, visibility isn't always the greatest. You can't always see oncoming cars and hitting a car dead on is in the nightmares of many drivers. So remember, when you're driving, particularly at high speed, you're not only holding the life of your own, you're protecting and holding the lives of others on that road. So please, I implore you to drive like you've got some sense. With that being said, let's move on. This little curved arrow is, mwah, is, is golden. When you see it, pay attention to it. In this context, it's telling you to move back into your lane if you're overtaken. When you see this style arrow on other roads, it's telling you what lane you should be in. You're going to see this a little bit more when we reach the section on bus lanes. Hatched markings are used to separate traffic and the road for safety reasons. If the lines are broken, it means that you can straddle it if you need to, or if you're turning right, for example. When the border is solid, this is prohibiting vehicles from entering, except in an absolute emergency. You will often see hatched markings with a solid line on dual carriageways when the fast lane is beginning to merge. A turning bay can give you a free space to turn right. If there's traffic lights directly in front of it, you must wait until the traffic light gives you the green light to go. If not, and you're turning into a side road, for example, you must wait until the traffic has cleared on both sides and then make your manoeuvre. If you need to turn right and there is no turning bay, all you need to do is indicate right, Take up position close to the centre line and then make sure the traffic is cleared and your exit is also clear, then you can make your manoeuvre. By the way, you're taking up this position early so other cars know where you intend on turning and they can pass by the left of you. If you're turning right onto a crossroad and there's another vehicle doing exactly what you're doing on the opposite side of you, you've got two options. You can turn near side to near side, this is where your passenger side would meet, or you can turn off side to off side and this is where your driver's side would meet because you're going behind the car. This is technically the safer option. It's safer because it allows you to have more visibility of the road ahead, but your driving instructor will explain this to you in a lot more detail. 
All right, let's cover bus lanes and cycle lanes. The image on the left is a bus stop clear away. You are not allowed to stop or park here during the enforceable hours. But bear in mind that not all bus stops look like this. So a bus lane looks like this. It has a thick white line and it also has dashed lines at the start to show you that the bus lane is beginning. Safely and carefully just move into another lane during the enforceable hours. Speaking of enforceable hours, they're in a blue box like this. Check out my video on parking signs to understand how to read this a lot better. But the long and short of it is the time underneath the sign is the enforceable hours. So this is the time that the bus lane is purely a bus lane. Outside of these hours, you can use it too. When you come to the end of the bus lane, you might see these arrows. They're there to indicate the bus lane has ended and you can move back into the left-hand lane. All right, let's do bicycle lanes real quick. A solid white line means that you cannot drive or park during the times of operation. However, a broken white line means that you can straddle or park or stop if it's absolutely necessary. Advanced stop lines are there to allow cyclists to be positioned ahead of traffic. Your stop line is here. So you might also come across these road markings. The first one is curved broken lines. This indicates that there's like an intersection and they act as de facto um, lane markings. The second are dragon's teeth and they increase your awareness. And the third you would typically see when speed cameras are there. And this is to measure your speed and cut you a ticket if you are speeding. Or points, depending on how many times you've been caught. But on a serious note, remember you're playing with people's lives on these roads. So please drive like you've got some sense. Okay, so we're on to our last section. We're going to look at the road markings that are on the motorway and dual carriageways. On the motorway and dual carriageways, you're going to see these reflective studs at night. The white ones are easy. The white ones separate the road. They are just the lane markings. The red are placed along the hard shoulders of the motorway and the dual carriageways. The amber ones are placed to the far right of you, so close to the central reservation. And finally, the green indicates an exit or a junction that's about to either leave the motorway or join the motorway. While you're on the motorway, you're going to see a few different variations of chevrons. Chevrons look like this. This particular one has a rule, and the rule is keep apart two chevrons. This means that there must be two chevrons visible between yourself and the car in front of you at all times. This chevron road marking with a solid line prohibits you from entering it, so don't be like this person or this person. These dividing chevrons are usually used on roads that have traffic that are moving in the same direction. Vehicles should not enter the chevron unless it's safe to do so. These are some other common lines that you might see. This one on the left shows that an exit is coming up. So they are short lines with very short and frequent spaces. The one next to it are longer lines with short spaces. And this indicates a hazard. And what I mean by a hazard is a roundabout or an exit. And the last one towards the right are lines that are separating the lanes. Okay, this image shows a hard shoulder. You can use this if your car is breaking down or there's some sort of an emergency. These yellow lines are found just before you reach a roundabout. They're giving you extra warning so that you can adjust your speed appropriately. And we are done. I know we covered a lot, guys. Well done for sticking through. Lastly, there is a few test questions. If you feel like you want to test yourself, feel free to pause the video here. So in this first image, we've got the word slow written on the ground. Obviously, you've got to slow it down because it is quite a sharp bend. And there's also a double line. This means no overtaking. Image two has a lot going on from yellow boxes to arrows to chevrons. See what you can find. And I will put the answers in the description box below. And we are done. I hope this video was informative. Check out my other videos in the car series. Till next time, happy driving.